Welcome to our third masterclass snapshot. Uh, this week we we're talking about business models. And so when we talk about business models, this is everything that makes up your particular business and how you deliver value to your customer and how you get money back in exchange for that. So we actually broke this down um, into two specific elements. So the first, we're going to talk about different types of revenue models, so ways that you can actually extract value from your customer, so actually get money back from your customer for the value that you're giving to them. The second is we're talking all about how to scale or how to automate or use technology for different elements of your business that might be constraining you in terms of capacity at the model at the moment. So with those two things combined, um, you should be able to work out a business model that best works for you and your particular product or service. So the first thing we're going to talk about is revenue models. So a revenue model is your strategy for um, charging your customers. So your strategy for, for pricing and how you're actually going to, to get customers to pay for your particular product or service. Now there are dozens and dozens of different ways that you can um, model your revenue but I wanted to take you through um, just a handful of really commonly used models. So the first one is subscription um, or freemium. Um, and so anybody with, say, a Netflix account would be familiar with subscription. So you pay um, usually a standardised or the same amount of money per month or per year and you get access to particular um, products or services or benefits back as a member. Now, freemium is a type of subscription model. Um, so this is where the base level um, of the particular value of products or services are available for free for customers, but then to go to the next level up, you have to pay for that. So if you're familiar with Spotify, for example, anybody can access Spotify for free, all of the music, except that you have to listen to some ads. If you want to get rid of those ads, you have to pay the next level up to be able to access the music ad free. So the next one that we're going to talk about is licensing. And this is particularly handy for anybody who has intellectual property. So if you've got intellectual property, what you can essentially do is rent that out to people in the form of licensing and actually get value or money back from the people you're renting it to. So if you think about Disney, for example, Disney definitely has a licensing type of model. They've got intellectual property in, for, in the form of their characters, their storylines, and so what they do is they rent it to different companies like Kellogg's, for example, so that they can have Lion King themed Cocoa Pops or whatever it might be. The next one is advertising. So advertising is where um, your Customers aren't actually paying for your particular product or service and a third party is actually giving you the money. So in this case, it would be businesses um, who pay to have their ad on your particular platform or your particular product or service. And what's important though here is that those businesses that are giving you um, the money for the ad are targeting the same types of customers that might be coming onto your platform or using your particular products or services. Um, another interesting one is franchising. So if you think about Boost Juice, McDonald's, KFC, um, any of those are actually franchises. And what a franchise is, is a business that has um, formulated a, a, lot, a big brand that is um, well known, has good attributes, people respect that brand. They also have good products and services and processes to go alongside of this. And what the company does is essentially um, gives all of those uh, secrets, their brand, their recipes, their um, processes, their training program, whatever it might be that makes that business tick, gives it to somebody else to start their own particular business using all of those assets. And then what generally happens is that the person who has the franchise has to pay a fee back to the kind of mothership business um, for the use of all of those um, different assets. The next one is um, a revenue model called commission-based. So if you think about uh, say Airbnb for example, um, on one side you have hosts, so people who own the apartment, um, on the other side you have travellers, so people who are renting say the apartment. What Airbnb does is by connecting the host with the traveller, they extract a particular fee for that connection. 
So this might be say 2%, 5% of whatever the transaction is. So the same goes with Uber. Every time they connect a driver with a rider, they extract some value um, because of that connection. The last one is something that has a little bit of a funny name, um, but it's called Razor and Blade Revenue Model. Um, and what this does is it's really talking about um, where you initially sell a, a particular product uh, for, say, at cost price or below cost price, but then the additional benefits after you charge um, a premium for. So if you think about a razor, for example, you might buy a razor for, say, $5. But um, every few weeks, every few months, you might need to replace the blades on that razor. But each time you buy a blade, it costs you $8. So where the razor is actually quite cheap, every time you have to refill it, it's more expensive. So if you think about printers, they're exactly the same. You can buy a printer for a couple hundred bucks. But every time you need to buy a cartridge and you need four of them, they cost you $80 to $90 each. So this is where you're selling the first product at um, a discount and the second version that needs to be refilled um, at a premium. So next, let's talk about scaling. And scaling is something that um, is often, there's a lot of misconceptions around it. Usually people think that scaling is binary. You can either scale or you can't. But it's actually more of a spectrum. So if you think about not scaling here, um, and something being completely scalable up here like a, a technology startup, what you can do is you can start here and gradually make um, optimization efforts or, or um, automation or using technology for your particular product or service to slowly move yourself along this spectrum to become more and more scalable. So how can you actually identify areas where you, you might need to optimize or make more efficient or use technology or tools to, to improve that scalability. So there's really two ways. The first way is to look at what you're actually selling. So look at your product or service and think about, does this heavily depend on, on you? Does it require specific expertise? Or is it something that is tailored or bespoke for every particular customer that you serve? If you answer yes to any of these, then this represents an opportunity for you to use technology or tools to automate this and make this much more efficient. So for example, can you create um, something that is relatively off the shelf, that you only tweak a couple of different elements so that it still feels bespoke, but you're not having to create everything from scratch every single time. Another way is just to think about what sucks up a lot of your time and effort and energy. And then think about how can this actually be done more efficiently? So for example, if your bookkeeping takes you a long time, what tools can you use to make this much, much quicker? So for any of these particular opportunities that you have identified, if you just Google startup automation tools, you get dozens and dozens and dozens of different types of apps, different types of uh, platforms that can help you um, make this a lot quicker and a lot easier. And the good thing is that the majority of these um, use a freemium model. So they're usually free, at least for one particular um, level, and then you only pay incremental amounts for more. So you can automate your business for very, very low cost. So that's it for week three. Um, we'll be back next week with week four, which talks about how to validate your startup.